What do Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, and you have in common? They all started their careers at the beginning. None of them started with all 27 of their championships. Michael Jordan did not pick up basketball as a kid and understand everything about basketball. Someone had to teach him the fundamentals of basketball. Today begins your journey in learning the fundamentals and to you earning all your future championships. Key points number seven and eight are where most beginners struggle the most. You won't want to miss out on them. Welcome, I'm DT with DT Disc Golf, and today we're going to talk about the eight fundamentals of disc golf. One. So I need you to subscribe and click the notifications tab so you do not miss out on future episodes. The basic objective of disc golf is much like traditional golf, where it is your goal to throw the disc the fewest amount of times possible. Precision, control, and skill is what you need to perfect in order to achieve this goal. While perfecting strategy and gameplay will help sharpen the mental aspect of your game. It is critical for beginners to understand the basic objective of the sport in order to grow. You cannot skip this part and just become a pro. The basic objective emphasizes skill development, strategic planning, precision, and control in order to achieve success in disc golf. Much like golf, disc golf uses a par scoring system. Each hole has a certain par or expected number of throws to get from the tee pad to the basket. Like we said before, the object is to throw the least amount of throws during a round. So you want to throw less than par. One stroke below par, so if it's a par three and you do it in two shots, that is what you call a birdie. Two shots below par, say it's a par four and you do it in two, that is called an eagle. On the flip side, throwing over par, or what you call bogeys, is less than ideal and raises your score and lowers you down on the leaderboard. The scoring system shows you your skill level and what you must work on to perfect your game. There is a strategy to having a lower score. You need to understand what shot works best for you. Not what works best for others, what works best for you. You want to execute those shots to lower your score and you want to avoid the bad shots that's going to raise your score. Most courses are gonna have 18 holes to them. Some will have nine in smaller areas, and if you get into a tournament, they may add temporary holes and get you up to 22 holes. Much like golf, there is a tee pad, and instead of a hole in the ground on a green, there is a basket in which you must get your disc to rest inside of. The big difference between golf and disc golf course layout is what's in between the tee pad and the basket. In golf, traditionally, it is wide open fairways with some ponds and sand traps. In disc golf, we have trees, bushes, water, elevation changes, anywhere and everywhere between the tee pad and the basket adding the challenge of navigating it. In order to get from the tee pad to the basket, you must perfect your precision in order to miss every obstacle in between. Shot selection is crucial to your success in navigating a course. However, what's more important is you understanding what you can and cannot do with a disc. You do not want to force shots that you are uncomfortable with. Understanding and perfecting course etiquette is going to make future rounds more enjoyable for you and everyone around you. The most important key point, 
to course etiquette is respecting your fellow players. Allow them to make their throws by being quiet, by being still, and not distracting them. Also, it's important to allow them to finish their throws before moving on to your throw. Pace of play is crucial to course etiquette. You want to make sure that you are keeping pace with the card in front of you, with the group in front of you. You do not want to slow the course down. While respecting the fellow players is important, you must also respect the elements around you. We want to avoid damaging trees, buildings, and any other objects on the course. While playing, make sure your garbage finds a trash can. Also, while playing, if you see garbage on the ground, pick it up, throw it in the garbage, help keep the course clean. If the course is not clean and the city parks or the state parks see that, they may be likely to close the park down. Having good sportsmanship and respect for other players, regardless of background or skill level, will help create a welcoming atmosphere in disc golf and encourage others to play, which lengthens the longevity of the disc golf course itself. One thing about golf is it's expensive. You have to pay your green fees, you have to get tee times, you gotta pay for carts, you also gotta pay for beverages. The nice thing about disc golf is most courses take place in a city park where it is free to play. There are no tee times. There are no cart fees. There are no green fees. There are no concession stands where you have to buy your beverages. While golf caters to those that have money, disc golf is accessible and includes everyone regardless of financial stability. On top of your financial status, disc golf doesn't care how old you are, your background, or your skill level. Beginners can grow at a comfortable pace, while more skilled players can challenge themselves to improve their skills at a different pace. Meanwhile, there is no judgment between players on different skill levels. All of this creates a strong community in disc golf where everyone is respected and nobody is judged and encourages participation from all beginners, which will help you improve your game. Disc golf extends further than the disc golf course itself. Friendships are formed regardless of diversity or skill level. Disc golf clubs and social gatherings are examples of this. Disc golf clubs and social gatherings, such as disc golf parties or membership parties, are great ways to learn how to improve your game as well as more experienced players will share their knowledge with you, the beginner, to help you improve your game. Another way to improve your skill is to simply join your local disc golf club. By doing so, you are investing yourself in the community and investing your time. Before jumping into number seven and number eight, I need you to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes. Like golf, where they have irons, putters, wedges, and drivers, disc golf has discs that are called putters, mid-ranges, control drivers, and distance drivers. Understanding the different types of discs and what they do will greatly improve your game. Also understanding that different discs take more technique to throw, that if you do not perfect your technique, you cannot perfect your throw. Good disc selection on the course will help you lower your score, while on the flip side, choosing the wrong disc for the wrong throw will raise your score. In the next episode, we will dive deeper into discs and which ones you should start off with. In order to get these discs to fly a certain way, you need to perfect your throwing technique. Different types of throwing techniques 
help manipulate the disc to do different things. Examples of different types of throwing techniques are the backhand, the forehand, thumbers, tomahawks, or rollers. Each one of these different throwing techniques demands a different body motion to get the disc to fly a certain way. Perfecting these throwing techniques by doing field work is what improves your skill level and helps you throw the disc farther and more accurately. We will dive deeper in the throwing techniques in a future episode. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification tab so you don't miss episode three, where we will dive into your first discs.